our planet Earth, the home to diverse forms of life, animals, plants, fungi, microorganisms, and much more. 30 million species inhabit the biosphere, ranging from microscopic bacteria to blue whales. Do we know them all? Have we given them names? Is there a systematic way of studying them? In this lesson, you will learn about the classifications of living organisms. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to Explain the history of the classification of living organisms. Describe organisms using the five kingdom classification system. Use the hierarchical classification system to further classify organisms into subgroups and explain the names of organisms using binomial nomenclature. Organisms differ in form, structure, and mode of living. So, they need to be grouped according to their similarities. The grouping of related organisms helps to study evolutionary relationships and to identify them. In the 4th century, Aristotle, the Greek philosopher, classified animals based on whether they live on land, in water, or in the air. But, his classification was unscientific as it placed unrelated organisms like fishes, crocodiles, and whales living in the same habitat, in the same group. What is classification? Classification is the division of living organisms on the basis of characteristics into groups and subgroups. A characteristic may be a particular form or function. For example, some animals have five fingers. This is a characteristic. The process of classification continues using a new characteristic each time. All living things are classified on the basis of their form and function. But forms and functions evolve with time. Evolution is the change in inherited traits from one generation to the next. It was Charles Darwin who put forward the idea of evolution in 1859 in his book, The Origin of Species. Most life forms that we see today have evolved to survive better. Hence, classification of life forms is closely related to their evolution. Biologists such as Ernst Haeckel, Robert Whittaker and Carl Woes have tried to classify living organisms into broad categories called kingdoms. Carolus Linnaeus classified all the living organisms as plantae and animalia. Ernst Haeckel proposed protista to include eukaryotic unicellular organisms. Copeland introduced Monera to include all the prokaryotic organisms. In 1969, Whittaker proposed Mycota to include fungi. This led to a five kingdom classification proposed by Whittaker which is still used today. 
these kingdoms were formed on the basis of cell structure. Mode Source of nutrition and body organization. Organisms can also be classified on the basis of their hierarchy. Kingdom breaks into phylum for animals or division for plants, class, order, family, genus, and species. Hence, the basic unit of classification is species. A species includes all organisms that are similar enough to breed and produce fertile offspring. Another important landmark in the history of classification of living organisms was the development of the system of scientific naming or nomenclature introduced by Carlos Linnaeus. When we name an organism, we write the name of the genus first and the species later. Both of these are Latin words. This method of naming an organism is called binomial nomenclature. Certain conventions are followed while writing scientific names. The name of the genus begins with a capital letter. The name of the species begins with a small letter. When printed, the scientific name is given in italics. And, when written by hand, the genus name and the species name have to be underlined separately. Now, let's take a good look at the five kingdoms. The kingdom Monera includes prokaryotic cells which lack organized nucleus and membrane-bound cell organelles. Some of the common monerans are bacteria, blue-green algae or cyanobacteria and mycoplasma. Monera are autotrophic. They get their nutrition by synthesizing their own food. They are also heterotrophic. That is, they get their nutrition from the environment. Members of the kingdom Protista are algae diatoms and protozoans. Protists include plants and animals. Their mode of nutrition can be autotrophic or heterotrophic. They are unicellular and the simplest form of eukaryotes. Some protists move with whip-like flagella, hair-like cilia, or finger-like pseudopodia. The next kingdom, fungi, includes mushrooms, rhizopus, and muca. These organisms are not plants and are not capable of performing photosynthesis. Most fungi are multicellular and eukaryotic. They have cell walls made of a tough, complex sugar called chitin. Fungi decay dead plants and animals to derive their food. Hence the name saprophytes. There are some fungi that live in a mutual relationship with blue-green algae. Both fungi and algae Together are known as lichen, and this relationship is called symbiosis. The kingdom Plantae includes all plants 
that are non-motile and autotrophic. They are multicellular and eukaryotic with cell walls made of cellulose. Kingdom Animalia is the largest of the kingdoms in terms of species diversity. This kingdom includes all the animals that are motile and heterotrophic. They are multicellular and eukaryotic without cell walls.